Hey everyone, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and this is my Nursing 7 Renal course on acute kidney injury. This is the second part of the video of a four video series and this is pre-renal concern based on perfusion and acute kidney injury. Hi everybody, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and this is what you should know about renal acute kidney injury also called acute kidney failure. This is the nursing seven where I cover all these seven areas of acute kidney injury. And most important right now, we're gonna be talking about pre-renal failure. When we're looking at acute kidney injury, what we're looking at is, there's a, that's a general term. Because what happens with acute kidney injury is that there's a further classification, whether it's a pre-renal problem, an intrarenal problem or a post-renal problem. So just if you see acute kidney injury, you first have to be asking yourself, well, what kind of acute kidney injury? And pre-renal is before the kidney, intrarenal is inside the kidney, and post-renal is after the kidney. All right, let's get into it. When we're talking about pre-renal concerns, all of them are gonna have this basic phases that they're gonna go through. And these phases are defined into four specific phases. Onset, oliguric, diuresis, and recovery. The first is the onset. Well, the onset's important because this can last for a few days, and this could either be a pre-renal situation, an intrarenal, or post-renal. Now, the problem with this is each section is very specific to what the onset would be. For example, in a pre-renal concern, hemorrhage is the problem. So the problem be outside the kidney. And with intrarenal, medications could be inside, that go inside the kidney that cause a problem. Or with postrenal, the problems after the kidneys, when we talk about like maybe a kidney stone or something like that. Well, all these will result, if they are not addressed on the onset, into an oliguric phase with no urine output. This, this period can last anywhere from one to three weeks. Once, once the underlying condition is resolved, what happens is, is that they will move into the next phase, which is called the diuresis stage, where once the kidney is okay again, they will start to urinate and they will start to uh, diurese. The big problem with diuresing is, is that they, be they could become really hypovolemic. And sometimes acute kidney injury can actually um, result in a 12-month recovery period. Ultimately, might, this patient could even end up on hemodialysis. And when we're looking at pre-renal failure, the main thing we're going to be looking at is this BUN. Because in pre-renal failure, the problem be before the kidney. So generally what would happen with a person is, is this BUN would be elevated. And the creatinine would be okay and normal. Another thing we'd be looking at is the H&H. &H. And the reason we look at the H&H &H is because of hemorrhage is a cause, which is also related to volume. Or platelets bleeding problems or anticoagulants bleeding problems. We also might look at the uh, BNP and uh, CHF because CHF is also a problem with pre-renal problems. Okay, let's look at the labs a little bit more closely as we move into the next. Labs is urine and urine is second and that's called pre-renal 20 to 1. And what that basically is just another term that we use to refer to a pre-renal condition. So basically what that means is that the BUN is elevated and the creatinine is normal. So the rule of this diagram is you look at the BUN first. If that's high, then you go down to the creatinine. If that creatinine is normal and the BUN is high, the person is dry. And that is a pre-renal situation like hypovolemia. Second is if they have a hypoperfusion, they're hemorrhaging, they are going to have not a lot, a lot of uh, perfusion, so therefore they're going to have a low flow state and also with bleeding. And we generally see this with urinary output, less than 30 cc's an hour. Generally, a urinary output should be greater than 30 cc's or greater than 424 hours. However, in pre-renal concerns in the second phase, you're going to have less than 30 cc's an hour or less than 420 four hours. And generally with the NCLEX, they're going to focus more on not in the past hour. So if you have greater than less than 30 cc's in two hours, then you have a pre-renal uh, condition. So let's move into the actual stages. So we have hemorrhage, 
Now, a patient with hemorrhage is risk for the same thing as volume. There's a low volume, they're bleeding. So post-op patients, and this is pre-renal B on the path. And that path stands for post-op concerns, anticoagulants, trauma, or hemorrhage. And like we said earlier, the H and H is what we're going to be monitoring for that patient, and also anticoagulants. So if a patient is in pre-renal failure, we're going to be really worried about anticoagulants with this patient. The patient will start to show a high heart rate, a mean arterial pressure less than 60. They'll be hypotensive and might even have a positive hemocult. And a positive hemocult would be telling you that there's anticoagulants or bleeding problems inside. The next phase that we're going to talk about hypovolemia and that's peeing puking or puking and that is the same thing as hemorrhage it's a low volume state so the problem be outside the kidney it's a low volume state and as it goes to the kidney this volume is not enough to perfuse that kidney and so what happens is and that could be uh, elevated sodium because sodium high is dry uh, diuretics right, which would be related to peeing um, B1 would be elevated, as we talked about earlier, 20 over 1, and they could have an infection, which would cause a normal person who has normal volemia to become vasodilated. And once they become vasodilated, they're in a low-volume state, which would then result in hypovolemia. The next thing is, is the last one is, is CHF. And CHF patients are not a low volume state, but actually a, a perfusion problem, where they're not able to perfuse that kidney fully. And we can tell that by a low ejection fraction, which is less than 60%, or a mean arterial pressure of less than 60. Now, if all these concerns are starting to happen with the patient, the big issue is, is that that patient will start to show and the first thing that you start to see is, is decreased urinary output. And so when we're looking at this, the problem be before the kidney in the triple H is hemorrhage, hypovolemia, and heart failure, pre-renal issues. Now it's important to see that with uh, pre-renal concerns, the problem is outside the kidney, and it's usually related to either a low volume or a hypoperfusion. So it's really not perfusing this kidney, and um, that's the major problem. Big issue with this is that all these pre-renal concerns can actually, what I call, pin, which means that they can go into intra-renal problems if they are not addressed quickly enough. And how do we know it is? We said earlier with the labs is that this BUN would be elevated. So that's always important to notice. Whenever you have a BUN elevated, you always go down to the creatinine. Now, if that creatinine is normal, then you have a potential dry state. And that's important to notice because that's also important to notify the doctor or to be uh, assessing your patient because the fact is is that's a condition we call 20 to 1 and that's a pre-renal problem because if it isn't addressed eventually what happens is that could become an intrarenal problem and that's why this is an important aspect so when we're looking at intrarenal problems everybody has an onset with with the uh, with the condition whether it is pre intra or post that is the actual insult of the kidney where pre is the problem before the kidney intra is the problem inside the kidney and post is a problem after the kidney if these problems are not addressed like hemorrhage hypovolemia or heart failure the patient will progress into an intrarenal problem and that's more more of a complex issue where uh, a patient would have to be closely monitored. And what do we do? We put a Foley in that person and we basically monitor the urinary output. Okay, let's wrap it all together and we look at this concept map. Basically, on a presentation, a patient with acute kidney injury can be any of these patients. They could be walking around, they could be in the doctor's office, come by ambulance, or, or also be in the floor. It doesn't matter what, what sex they are, male or female or age. Anybody can have it. And the symptoms of pre-renal failure is just like all the other ones. You're an output, but they could have hypovolemia or hypoperfusion or CHF. Precipitating factors is the onset of the triple H's. That will become a pre-renal concern, and the complication, the main complication, is intrarenal problems. So what do we call the doctor? Well, what we said before is that if a patient has... Uh, BUN elevated in a normal creatinine, 
if they both go intrarenal, then that's a bigger problem. So we would call the doctor. Also, if the patient is bleeding or if the patient is um, really, really hypotensive, like systolic less than 90 or uh, mean arterial pressure less than 60, we're going to call the doctor. Um, next thing is, is will we have a of course we'll have a monitor we monitor in blood pressure we're going to check our labs we're going to check the b1 and creatinine regular we're going to check the h and h if the patient's here for infection they're at risk for it um not so much the renals not so much the liver uh, definitely the coags and also the uh, bnp for chf uh, the main problem is in the kidneys and it could be pre-renal but it could also be post-renal which we're going to cover in another lecture uh, temperature could be elevated our pulse is going to be high because of our uh, hypoperfusion respirations will be high blood pressure will be low mean arterial pressure will also be low and pulse acts well that's a late sign and it's always about fluid status with pre-renal concern they could have a thready pulse um, which will affect uh, mentation and they could start to get a little confused heart will start to increase and uh, not so much lungs but then renal most of these patients can recover they can be discharged but most times they're going to be sent to a uh, meds well on a med search floor they can get it and then uh, they'll be sent to an ICU where they'll be closely monitored also post-op patients are at risk for this um, that's about it with with uh, acute kidney injury. This is Kevin with NursingCamp.com. Uh, see my other lecture where I cover more about intravenal failure and post-renal failure.